How's it going everybody, it's your boy Po and today we're gonna be surviving 100 days on the new release map of Fyodor. Now all of this is gonna be done on official servers and since I don't have control of anything, it's gonna be quite a challenge. But you know me, I always like to do it a little bit more challenging and I have a couple goals in mind. Basically, I had to defeat all the bosses at least on Gamma difficulty and get my hands on a Fenrir. Other than that, I cannot use Rexes for anything. And I have to tame at least one of the new creatures, which is the Desmodest Dracula, the Andrew Sarkis, and the Fear Hub. Other than that, I have only two rules. One, I have to start a fresh character. And two, I cannot use anything from my previous tribe because basically it's already on the server. And other than that, it's time to start our journey. Let me know in the comment section below that you think we'll be able to do it. We're gonna be failing. I don't know, you let me know. So, without any further delay, let's jump into it. Day one started like any other Bob, noob, or new player, whatever you want to call it, stranded on the beach without knowing what to do first. So the first thing that came to my mind was to level up. So I decided to go ruin farming. The first ruin I remember to be on the volcano island. So I decided to teleport there, but it wasn't for long since as soon as I got it, I got killed by a turning dragon. After that, I tried running to another location where I knew there was another ruin, but a cardinal saw me and said nope, and decided to kill me. So in less than 5 minutes I already lost 2 lives. So I went for the app cave and when I was about to get there, a server message popped up and it was an update. So it was gonna restart the servers in 15 minutes. Well, there goes my progress so far. But since I have 15 minutes, I decided to push and get as much done as possible. I tried going to the app cave, but a terror bird killed me close to the entrance. After that, I decided to go to the brute mother terminal cave where I managed to get a couple more ruins before dying to a level 200 Atroplora. And since it was time for the update, I decided to log off for a bit and just wait it out. When I came back to the server, it restarted to the point where I was about to get to the app cave. So I went quickly, got the ruins from the app cave, ran to the brute mother terminal cave to grab all the other ruins that I missed, and you wouldn't guess it. I died to a level 200 Arthropora, but since there was a rollback, technically it was the first time I died to it. So from there I teleported to Venalan Southeast to the shipwreck to get some supplies, and if you didn't know, Infielder has these shipwrecks where they have crates and barrels around them, that they will give you metal tools cook meat, and even metal. So once I have everything, all, all the essentials, I decided to look for a place to live on. And basically I teleported to Asgard. And so once I was on Asgard, I started making some touch foundations to start making the foundation of the base. And once the foundation was done, I went to check on a raptor that was fighting a couple mammoths. And luckily the mammoths managed to kill the raptor. So I went over there, harvest the height, and then I started making some structures like beds and modern pestles. Now in day 2, since the modern pesto was done, I started farming for arrows and narcotics while a little later I ran out of water and I needed to go to the obelisk to get some water and on the process I found some beaver dams. So I decided to kill the beaver and harvest the dams, which from then we got cementing paste and rare flowers which are gonna be great for helping me trap a mawin. So now that we have the things for trapping the Mawin, it was just a matter of finishing making the Nakara arrows and getting a trap set up. On the process of preparing the stuff for taming the Mawin, I ran out of water again. So me being me, I just prefer to kill myself and basically get full food and full water. And I mean, I have a cliff nest to me, so it was extremely easy and actually pretty fun. Eventually, after everything was ready for taming our first Mawin, so I made a trap and tried to trap it, but after trying to trap it and almost getting myself killed, the Mawin got away. The trap didn't work, I don't know why, but it doesn't matter. I said fuck it and continue on my way. Now I did need to get one today, so I kept looking. And after looking for a while, I managed to find more and I decided to knock them out the old fashioned way. By just following them and shooting them around. And after a little bit, I managed to do it. And funny thing was that as soon as I put some food on it, I got disconnected from the server. After a couple minutes, I'll say like 5 minutes, I managed to get back to the server. And the Mawin was completely tame. So thank god that I finally got one. 
Now day 3, I started by farming for a forge and a smithy. On the process, I found a diplo and I decided to kill it for the hide of meat. After, I made a couple forges, modern pestle and even a new bed. Once I made all of that, I waited for the metal to finish cooking and made a smithy to be able to make a Maui saddle, but not before I finished farming all the necessary resources. After a while, I finally had everything for the saddle, so I made it and took the Maui for a spin when I saw an alpha raptor close to the base, so I needed to drag him away. And once done, I decided to start farming for more arrows and narcotics to start taming our big creatures. On the process, I made a spyglass to check on the levels, and by luck I found a 130 Andrew. So, you know I have to tame it. I went to the main island to grab some honey, and basically after that I started the taming process. On day 4, after trying to tame the Andrew and getting attacked by Microraptors twice, and then two Rexes appeared to kill everything, I said fuck it, and I went to look somewhere else. After that, I got attacked again, and decided that it's time to give Asgard a break and go to another place. So I did, and I went to the main island on Vanilland Southeast. There, I found another 130, so I tried to tame it, but I finished running into a snow owl and ruined the taming. So after that, I decided that I was done, but eventually I had to tame one, but for now, I was completely done. After those fails, I decided to start working on my boss army, Ananakis, my secret weapon for the bosses, so I started farming eggs. After a while farming eggs, the only good egg I found was a 130, so I decided to continue farming after a couple hours to give them time to spawn back. For now, it's time to head to the base and start getting everything ready for hatching those things. I tried standing torches and they didn't work, so I decided to go for make a fabricator and start making ACs or air conditioners. It will be much easier like this, so I decided to go to the oil fields to get oil of course and then farming everything else around the base. And by the end of the day 4, we have our fabricator. Day 5 was a farming day, in which I started by farming metal around the base organic polymer on the swamp island in which I got spoiled meat at the same time, nitro berries to make narcotics with the spoiled meat, silica pearls for electronics, and crystal. After I did all the farming, I waited for the metal to finish cooking and the electronics finish crafting to start working on the hatchery. Once everything was ready, I managed to make two air conditioners. I tried placing them down and tried placing the egg to see if it incubated, but still two air conditioners wasn't enough. On day 6, I plan to spend all day farming more metal and dying eggs, and that's what I started doing. After a quick metal run, I went to look for eggs while the metal cooked, but I couldn't find a single nest. So I decided to go ruin farming to get some SP and get to the level to unlock the Desmoder saddle. And if you don't know what the Desmoder is, basically it's a giant bat that is gonna make this challenge so much easier. Hunting for ruins, I made my way to the space biome, in which after grabbing all the ruins, I thought that it was a perfect opportunity to get some sap. I mean, I was already down there, and sooner or later I was gonna need it, so I did farm a little. After that adventure in the space biome, I made my way back home, where finally with the metal melted, I could make more air conditioners. But after making the extra air conditioners, the egg was still not incubating. At this rate, I'm better out just making an egg incubator, once I get to the level, to unlock it. Of course, so this means killing more alphas and getting more ruins. On day 7, while I was taking a quick break, an alpha raptor came and killed my only Maui. And I was a little pissed off, because now it meant that I needed to tame another one. So I got everything ready and I went out looking for one. On the process of getting a replacement, I found a 55 and a 145. But both of them disappear instantly once they left render. And if you've tamed Mawins before, you know that as soon as you shoot it, it will jump up and fly away. So basically, that's what they did. One shot, jump up, and fly away. They were gone. So after giving up on the 55 and 145, I decided to go get some blood packs to tame at the smoothest. It took me a couple minutes and multiple deaths, but I managed to get enough blood packs for a 150. So 
I teleported to the cave where you can find them at Vardiland Southwest, which brings you to the entrance of the cave. It took me no time to find one. Even if it was a low level, it was great for what I wanted it. And later on, I can use it to tame my higher level ones. So, it's a win-win. After taming the bat, I went back home, made the saddle, and once I was back with it, I decided to run to the secret app zone on the wall of the cave to get some ruins. It was perfect because I was getting some SP for myself, for the bat, and since the bat was getting SP and it was a fresh bat, it was getting a lot of levels. After that, I wanted to make some fish basket to start taming some shadow mains, so I tried farming fungal wood from some giant mushrooms on the same cave, but they didn't drop any fungal wood. So I went to the shadow main territory on Asgard to get it there. I managed to find fungal wood on some small trees with a ball on top of them, and funny thing was that while I was farming it, I didn't notice a mantis coming at me. And since I didn't notice it, it succeeded on killing me. So I had it to spawn back a base and made my way all the way from my base to where I had my stuff and the bat. And I had to be quick about it because if not, it was gonna kill my bat. It was a 145 mantis. But I managed to get to my stuff and the bat in time, so I killed the mantis and continued making the fish basket. For day 8, I spent most of the day gathering everything for making cryopod. Eventually, I managed to make 20. Now, I had enough cryopod to store the fish I catch for the shadow mains. So, I started looking for fish. And my first stop was the app cave on Vanillam South. To my surprise, it was an old build zone. And I was a little mad because there was some massive fish there and colorful too, so I wanted them, but I couldn't catch them. But since I couldn't get them there, I needed to look somewhere else. And just like that, I spent the rest of the day looking for fish, catching fish, cryopotting fish, and repeating the cycle until I had enough for a good level shadow man. When day 9 arrived, I was still looking for fish, but since it was nighttime and I was on the redwoods, I couldn't see a thing. So I decided to stand on a rock in the water and wait for daytime. When daytime arrived, I managed to get the remaining fish that I needed for a good level shadow main, so I went back home, prepared a trap, and went out in search of one. Eventually, I found a mating pair of 95, so I decided that it was a decent level to start out with. If you didn't know, shadow mains are really tough, so even a low level one can be extremely useful. After that, I managed to trap it and started taming it. it took me a while, but I managed to tame it just before night time. Once tamed, I took it out, checked the stats, and I headed back home to drop off any unnecessary stuff to start killing everything we saw. It was time to level up our new friend. On day 10, I was still killing everything that I saw and even took on some alphas, which did a number on me, so I went back home and left the shadow main to heal up. By this time, it was already daytime, so I decided to go and try to tame the other shadow main. Now, I don't know, maybe it was the trap or something, but I didn't manage to start the taming process. I gave it a couple fish and nothing. So, I decided to leave it there and since I couldn't kill it with my bat, hopefully it was gonna disappear like all the other dinos once I leave render. And apparently it worked. It was gone by the next time that I check on it. After all of that, the shadow main still needed to heal and it was taking forever. So, I took the opportunity to go tame a snow owl. Apparently, the game didn't want me to, since the only thing that I could find was level 20. I mean, it was a low level one, but it was okay with me. I let my snow owl die a lot, so it was not gonna be long before I needed another one. So with that in mind, I kited one to an unlock trap, knock it out, tame it, and just before I got disconnected from the server. Apparently the server crashed and it was out for around 20 minutes. Once I was back, I saddled the snow owl, healed the shadow main, 
and I went out to kill some more Arthros and get some more Dynax since I was gonna be around the area either way. By day 11, I had a good amount of eggs, so I decided to start making some kibble. And for this, I needed some crops, cooked meat, fiber, berries, and the special eggs, which in this case was going to be used dine eggs. So for the crops, I went to the farm in the village by the center of the map. After that, I went to the shipwreck for cooked meat, and luckily I got some metal at the same time. After that, I went to grab some honey from the honey rocks. And with all those ingredients, the last part was to throw them all in a cooking pot with some water and watch the magic happen. Only downside is that I needed to make lots of the chowder and the problem was that making it took forever. So, while I was waiting to make the chowder, I went on a good obsidian run and made some harpoon launchers that I was going to be using later and net projectiles. Those things were going to be extremely useful along the road. At the end of the day, I had kibble, and that meant that we could start taming some boss dino and utility dinos like megatheriums that could be both. For day 12, I got everything ready to tame a megatherium. So, I went out to tame one. And the only place I could think about, it was on the redwoods. So, that's where I went. On the way there, I found a 145 alpha carnal that I really wanted to fight. So without taking it twice, I decided to go kill it. On the process, a sneaky pago got into steal from me, but without even noticing it, I kill it and got my staff back. Literally, the pago stole my stuff and ran in between us, so he had a quick and painless death, basically one shot by the shadow main. After that, I continued my search for a megatherium, but I didn't have any luck. Eventually, I found a level 50 that I decided to tame because even if it's a low level, it can be useful for farming fiber and berries. So, I knock it out, tame it, and once I tame it, I took it back to base and decided to do a narco berry run. After gathering enough narco berries, I grabbed my shadow main and made my way to the swamp island to get some spoiled meat. Once back home, I threw everything into a modern pistol and started making narcotics like a madman. On day 13, I noticed that I was high enough level to start drop and artifact hunting. So, that's exactly what I did. First, I went to the app cave on Vanilland South in hope of getting both the red and the yellow drop, but I only managed to get the yellow one with a shitty dolphin saddle and a compound bow. After the app cave, I went to the cave where you can find the artifact of the clever and the pack, which is a lava cave full of bats, spiders, snakes, and centipedes. On that cave, after getting the artifact, I was gonna get a loot crate when I dismounted to the wrong side and fall into the lava. But luckily, there was a rock that saved me from instant death. I tried whistling my bat, but it didn't want to listen, and I had to use my shadow man to survive. In the process, I lost my bat and almost lost my shadow man. After that incident, I teleported back home and found a bat with some blood pack. So, I decided to make some parachutes and go take some more bats because bats are extremely useful on this map and I needed them to run a couple caves. Once I was on the cave, I managed to find two bats on the floor looking around for something. I don't know for what, but I managed to aggro at them and got to a safe spot to be able to tame both of them. This was great. I had one for exploring and everything that I needed and I had an extra one just in case. So, I saddled them and continued hunting for drops and artifacts. Next up was the ice cave, the cave of the sky lord. Here I got a lot of loot boxes and I tried getting the artifact but there was a lot of stuff around it and even a snow owl, like that was the first and then the only time that I saw a snow owl in that cave. From the ice cave I went to the cave of the hunter which didn't have anything special and later I decided to go back to the sky lord to finish by getting a couple loot crates. I was trying to get some good fur to be able to go to the ice biome, which is on Jotunheim, but still, I wasn't ready. On day 14, I found two level 130 Andrews that I tried to tame, but just like previous ones, something always happens that fucks up the taming. To this point, I was about to say fuck the Andrews again, but I really wanted one. So I decided to go to Asgard to try my luck one more time. 
there i found a 140 that was on the perfect location and it was safe for an easy timing process so i did it i went to tame it funny thing is that on the process i got a galley that loved honey and it was eating all the honey that i had for the andrew man i wanted to kill it but i didn't want to risk hitting the andrew and fucking up the taming process all over again it was already halfway there so yeah nah I was like moving to the side and forget about the galley. Eventually I managed to tame it and I think for the first time in a long time I named something straight after taming it. And I name it Pain in the Ass. Cause man if you're not on the perfect location or on the perfect dinos you're not gonna be able to tame these things. And I hate to admit it they're extremely useful and great tames. So. Later on, I was exploring on Asgard and I found a 130 female that I tried to tame to have a mating pair, but I said no. Be happy that you already got one and forget about this one. So, that's basically what I did. I said fuck it, and on my way back home, I found a level 95 Maui that got my attention just because of its pretty colors. So, I had to tame it. A couple minutes later, and it was mine. And with that, I decided to call it a day and had to sleep. For day 15, I wanted to tame an Enki and a gas bag for metal farming on Asgard since I couldn't use a flyer on the realms. And especially since I saw an Enki close to base and I was close to the gas bag spawn. So I got everything to tame them and went for the Enki first. It was quick and easy to knock it out. Now, on the other hand, the gas bag used up all my crossbow and it never went down. Sadly, when I went back home to repair the crossbow, the gas bag had disappeared because I disrendered it. Now this thing about dino disappearing just because they got this render was getting really annoying. But at least, I had the Anki. After finishing the Anki, I grabbed the Anki and my shadow main to go do a metal run around the mountain by the base. And with that, we finished day 15 doing a metal run. On day 16, I wanted to start working on the bosses, so I decided to go tame a Velinosaur. I grabbed a neck gun, some tranks, and I headed to the volcano island where it's the only place that you can find them. Quickly, I found a 145 fighting a couple RGs, so I decided to kill the RGs, and afterwards I netted him, knocked him out, and finished taming it. Once tamed, I cryopotted it and took my shadow main to do a dying egg run for more kibo eggs and high level eggs since we needed more high level dines for faster and better breeding. After grabbing some dine eggs, I decided to do the Asgard mini boss, the twin Fenrir's Hattie and Skull, but sadly somebody already did it and I had to wait a little. I decided to wait just cause I didn't want to come later and get a notification that somebody did it again and then having to wait another hour. And waiting a little bit is not gonna kill me so that's how I spent the rest of day 16. Sitting on the terminal, waiting for my turn. Day 17 was the day I was gonna fight the twin Fenrirs, finally. So, I started the fight and got into position. It took me a couple tries before finding the sweet spot, but once we had it, we just sat there and killed Haiti extremely quick. Afterwards, we focused on killing Skull, which was a little more of a handful since we had to move back and forward to dodge their firewolf, but after a while both of them were killed and I could grab my reward. I got some element that could be used for trading and a mining drill that will help me a ton from now on. So we can say it was really worth it and super easy with just one Velinosaur. Now we just needed to do the bear and the bee. For day 18 I spent most of it making forges and farming metal on the space biome. And once the forges were full, I decided to farm some SP. So, I made my way to Volcano Island, and I killed every single magma source that I could. Since magma source gives so much SP, it was my plan for the rest of the day. A couple minutes into day 19 and I saw a fire wyvern close to where I was and I thought that I could take it on. And big mistake, shadow main are strong, but not that strong, at least not mine. And it was a 170 fire wyvern against my shadow main. At first I thought that I could do it 
and later on I started to see my health drain too quickly so I tried running away but I couldn't I ran out of stamina so I couldn't do anything and you can imagine how crazy I was looking around trying to find a way out but luckily the wyvern aggro into a stego and I managed to get a little bit of stamina just to jump away far enough to be able to teleport back to base once I was back on base I grabbed my snow owl I went to Vanilland, filled him up and did a dynamic run after finishing the run I was high enough level to unlock the egg incubator so I did and I grabbed everything I needed to make one I managed to make one by night time and I was extremely happy to see dine eggs already being incubated. Now it was a matter of time before a boss army was ready. On day 20 I almost completed the base but I decided that since the dines were almost ready to hatch I needed to fill up the mowing with meat. So I went out on a killing spree to get as much meat as I could and later once I got enough meat I went to the Skylord cave to grab the artifact and the app cave to get some loot drop. I was hoping to get some decent fur, but luck was not on my side today. In day 21 all the dines were ready to be hatched, so I did. Once they were on the mowing radius, I left them there to go gather all the remaining resources for the industrial forge since the mowing was already full of meat, I didn't have to worry about them. After a while I had the industrial forge up and running and I finished the day by doing a meat run, remember? always have to keep the mountain full so the babies don't starve. Day 22 was spent farming drops on the bee cave or the cave of the artifact that's strong, like some people call it. Here you have about 7 drops that spawn multiple times giving you anywhere from red saddles, shotgun blueprints, flags and even fur armor. So like always I cannot have you having fun for long without fucking with you so Getting to the end of the day 22, I got disconnected on the worst place possible, and then I couldn't get on. On day 23, I finally managed to enter the server, and to my surprise, I was greeted by 5 circles that were trying to eat me. To prevent them from attacking my bat, I jumped on the water and swam far away from it. It was funny. It looked like I was surfing cracks, but eventually they got me. So, I grabbed my extra bat, went and grabbed my bat that had all the loot inside of it and teleported home. It was a very stressful day, so after that I crowd everything and went to sleep for real. For day 24 I started by imprinting the babies and later on going to check if I could survive the extreme cold of the ice biome. When I got there it was clear that I wasn't ready, but I did manage to spot a 145 megatherium so now I wanted to work on getting an industrial cooker for making kibble in bigger quantities. So for the rest of the day I spent it farming metal, organic polymer, crystal and oil. In which while I was farming oil I spotted a giga. It was a low level giga but still I wanted it. So that motivated me to work even faster. Eventually I made it and decided to place it close to base by a waterfall. It wasn't pretty, but it worked, and that's the only thing that matters. After everything was done, I finished the day by making narcotics, cause if I wanted the giga, I was gonna need a crap ton of narcotics. On day 25, I saw that I didn't have empty cryopods, and that I did have some fish that I was not gonna be using, so I decided to cryopod them on the pond close to the base. Now this is when something funny happened. As soon as I started to uncrop out the fish, a Hesperonis came and started killing them. I didn't even care at the moment, but quickly my shadow main appeared out of nowhere and he hit the Hesperonis like, bitch, leave my friends alone. I found it extremely funny. And to that point, since the shadow main was already there, I decided to mount it and kill the Hesperonis because 
You never know, maybe I can use the fish later on. Now with the fish safe, I could continue working on the base and crowd pass some dinos because I had some dinos I finished drawing and I needed to crowd pad all the males to have some space and I left basically all the females and one male to continue breeding. After that, I went and made some keyboard for the Giga and gathered everything to knock it out. On the process, preparing everything, I saw a beautiful blue and green matchup that I decided to try to tame. And I say try because you never know and they sometimes ask for some really random stuff that you cannot get. But hopefully, they didn't ask for anything other than rare mushrooms and I think even some berries. So, after taming the matchup and having everything to tame the Giga, I went to check on it, but my luck just ran out because since I disrendered it, it basically despawned. So, with my tail in between my legs, I made my way back home to drop some of the stuff and I headed to go get a Megatherium. For day 26, I was still looking for Megatheriums, so I decided to go to the Ice Biome to try my luck. And since the ice biome is extremely cold, I didn't have the correct armor, I decided to make some medical brews to be able to stay alive. There I found two level 145 megatheriums which I decided to knock out and tame, and eventually I found a 150 teresino that I decided to tame as well, just because it was a 150. I mean, it's a 150, you're not gonna let it go or just kill it. Well, basically while taming the Teresino, I got a server message that they were gonna do another update. So I finished taming the Teresino, went quickly to base and bred my dines, just to lay in bed, log off, and call it a day. On day 37, I started by doing a meat run for the babies. After that, I decided to go try to kill the stone bear, but when I was there, somebody already did it, and I had to wait a long time. So I decided to go make some kibble and veggie cakes while I waited. In the process, I saw 145 otter that I needed since it gives you insulation, and it wasn't gonna be a great help surviving the ice biome. But it wasn't a place without a fish. Or so I thought, because it was next to the pond next to my base. And I have forgotten that I have some fish and cryopody on that pond. So I decided to go get the fish and use them to tame the otter. And just like that, nothing went to waste, and I managed to tame a 145 otter, so now I should get enough insulation to survive the snow without a problem. Whoa. On day 28, I remember that it was time for the bear minibus. So I went there and I spent a good while fighting it. Eventually I managed to defeat it and it gave me a great crossbow blueprint. So I dropped everything on the base and I went out to tame anything that can grab my attention. With that said, I found a 140 Megatherium and a 140 Snow Owl that I finished taming. That 140 Snow Owl was a massive upgrade for sure. For day 29, I decided to spend the day making veggie cakes for Ovetsis. And basically, that's what I did. After making a good amount of veggie cakes, I went out and tamed as many as I could. On day 30, after getting enough overseas, I decided to go tame a pure hawk. That way, I had finished taming all the new creatures of Fyodor. After checking some of the spawn, I finally found a 145 that I wanted to tame. So, I started taming it, but it was a little difficult because there were a lot of them on the area. Eventually, I got tired of the ones that I didn't want, and I tried killing them. But with my shadow main, and that was a massive mistake. I managed to hit mine on the process of trying to kill the rest, and I resetted the taming process. I was super mad, and I have wasted all a lot of ships for nothing. So, I decided to try finding a level like 20 or something lower than that. But since on this map I think the lowest is level 15, it was gonna be hard. Luckily, I found it, and after a little while I managed to tame it with the overseas that I have left. Finally. I had tamed all the new creatures of Fyodor. 
I did have some oversets left, but I decided to store them for later in case I need mutton or I find another Fjordhawk that I want to tame. For day 31, I decided to explore a little bit on the ice biome, and eventually I found a high level Yuri that I wanted to tame, because basically the Yuri is going to be the key feature on the boss fight strategy. So I decided to knock it out and tame it. But since Yuri takes forever to tame, I had to sit right next to it because on the area that I managed to knock it out, it wasn't safe. There was a lot of things that could kill it and I didn't want to lose it. So I spent most of the day next to it, but at the end of the day, I managed to tame it. On day 32, while I was exploring the map, I found a 140 Megatherium that I decided to knock out. And with that Megatherium, we completed Bela Killing Squad. So the last mini boss was about to be done. Also, little down the line, I found a 140 Deodon, which I still didn't have a major use for it, but it was a Deodon and a 140, so I decided to tame it nonetheless. After both of them were tamed, I decided to roam some caves in search for some special blueprints like Rexes, Gigas, Dines, and even Andrews, but I didn't have any luck, like always. On day 33, we finally had our Bela Killing Squad. And I was feeling a little motivated. So I decided to level them up and teleport to the main island to be able to heal them with the snow owl. I mean, I would have done it on Asgard, but since you cannot use flyers on the different realms. And this is when disaster strike. And I know a lot of people are gonna find it funny. I did, but at the same time, I was mad as hell. I didn't notice and I teleported too close to my base. So I brought all the dinos with me. I wanted to log off. I think that is even worse than whistling follow all. Because this time, at least for a while, it's in your base. This time I teleported to the other realm with all my dinos. Which was the Dines, the Megatheriums, Bats, Mawin, Fearhawks. <laughs> it, was, it was a clusterfuck. It took me a while, but I managed to bring everybody back and reorganize the base before teleporting back to the main island and finished healing the Megatheriums. To which point... I was ready to do the boss fight, but I just didn't want to do it just yet. Why? I don't know, to be honest. I don't know. In day 34, Chiki was offering a Giga. And for those that don't know Chiki, Chiki is one of the players that started out on the server with us. Not in the same try, but at the same time. At first, I thought it was a joke, but he told me to go to his base to pick it up, so I did without thinking it twice. To my surprise, Chiki gave me a fully raised Giga, not a tame one, not a regular one, a fully raised R Giga, which is stronger and it was fully imprinted, which make it even better. I have to say that this was going to be a massive help for sure. I was really grateful for that. And like I said to him before he gave me the Giga, after the challenge was done, I was going to give it to a new player on the server to help them out, just like he helped me out. And basically after that, I finished making the Megatherium saddles and went out to do Bela. I didn't use the Giga because it didn't seem fair, since I wasn't planning on having a Giga and I already prepared everything for the Megatherium, so yeah, Megatherium were the way, and basically they did the entire mini boss with minimum effort. Like they only lost a couple hundred health and it was in no time, so it was great. After that, I went back home to prepare the stuff to get the remaining artifact because now with all the mini bosses done, it's time for the big boys, the island bosses. For day 35, I went artifact hunting. Started first with the artifact of the clever pack, which was the cave that I lost my first bat. Then the artifact of the immune, where while I was healing an Andrew, a 175 fire wiving attacked me. And yeah, I almost lost my Andrew again. Once I got away, I made my way to the artifact of the cunning, which is super easy with the shadow main and it's underwater, so yeah, definitely shadow main is the way to go. After that, I went to the devious, that is a completely underwater cave full of eels, so you have to be careful whenever you go there. And finally, the one remaining artifact was the brute, which you needed a special gear to survive inside. It was a poisonous cave full of desmodes, centipedes, spiders, snakes, and onyxes. When I say special gear, the special gear is either a gas mask or a mixed set of Skua and Gilly to prevent the poison from harming you. And so, easy enough, we got the Brute Artifact with an Andrew and a Bat, and with that we had everything for the bosses. 
all the artifacts and all the relics. With all of that done, we got to day 36 and I didn't do anything productive this day. I just went out killing stuff and having fun. I needed a little break, I was starting to burn myself out, so yep, definitely day 36 was a chill, do nothing day. For day 37, I wanted to grab some special eggs, in this case, rock drakes and magnosaurs. I started by going to the rock drake cave with an Andrew, and after fighting a lot of rock drakes, I managed to grab a couple high level eggs, which I was happy with. After that, I headed to the Magnuser cave where with a bat I managed to grab some eggs extremely easy and some others were a little bit of a close call but still I managed to grab all the eggs that I could find. And after that I decided to head back home and place them on the egg incubator and finish the day with a meat run. Remember the babies can never run out of food. For day 38, it was a chill day because basically the only thing that I did for this day was to imprint my dines, hatch a magmasaur, hatch a rock drake, and go do a meat run for the dines, off a run for the magmasaur, and a nameless run for the rock drake even though whenever I went to look for nameless venom, there wasn't a single rock. But other than that, I was just chilling around the base and waiting for the babies to finish growing up. For day 39, I noticed that my base was super dark, so I started the day by making some lights. Later, I went to get some nameless venom, and this time the cave was full of it. Once I was done, I spent the rest of the day farming loot on the ice cave, where I was looking for giga saddles, andro saddles, or anything that can be extremely useful for me. And let's say that I couldn't find anything. But at the end of the day, the only good stuff that I managed to get was a couple shotguns, a crossbow blueprint. And some other stuff, but no Giga Saru Andrew or anything super special. So, the grind must continue. On day 40, I decided to spend it instead of the ice cave on the redwood cave. And basically, I had the same luck. Nothing useful. I did get some crossbows, some shotguns, even fur armor, but nothing useful like Andrew, Giga, or even Yuri. Which to this point, the main item that I'm looking for is Yuri Saddles. But still couldn't find a single one. I swear Yuri saddles are like unicorns. You can find one every like a thousand years. On day 41 I decided to make the Mastercraft Megatherium saddles. So for this I was gonna need cementing paste, hide, and metal. So I decided to go all around the map to the beaver dam locations to farm cementing paste. Later on I went to the space biome to farm some metal and I finished the day by taking out the Giga and collecting as much hide as possible. For day 42, the grind continued, and eventually I managed to make 4 Mastercraft Megatherium saddle, which was basically everything that I needed. I tried to find a decent duty saddle, but I couldn't find one, so a primitive one had to do. And now with all the saddles made, all the dinos leveled and healed, we were ready to take on our first boss, the Brute Mother. On day 43, I went to take on the Brute Mother, and at first I was a little worried because I only took 4 Megatheriums, but eventually they showed that that was more than enough. The Megatherium did wonderful and almost lost no health, so that got me really confident and decided to prepare the Dines and went out to do the Megapithecus, which the Dines did wonderful as well, and even though I lost some health on the Yuri, it was pretty easy and I didn't lose a single Dine. So, with spider and monkey done, the only one remaining is the dragon, the hardest boss so far. So I spent the rest of the day making armor and medical brews, cause I had too many bad experiences with Dimorph and I'm not gonna get killed again by one of those. For day 44, after what it felt like an eternity healing the Yuri, we were ready for the dragon. So, we jump in it without thinking it twice. We had a couple close calls, but after a couple minutes, we managed to defeat it without a single problem. Not even the dragon was enough for us, and 
notice that I'm only using 12 dines, not all 19, plus the Yuri, of course. So with 56 days remaining, we had everything tribute-wise to do the Fenrir boss. But he will have to wait a little bit. For the rest of the day, I decided to rest and admire all the hard work we have done so far. On day 45, I grabbed a couple dines and I went to level them up. The only problem was that they were taking forever and I was getting bored. So I decided to change it up a little bit and go run farming. I grabbed my shadow main and I explored most of the map without finding a single land alpha. So I decided to grab a scuba tank and go underwater. There I found a couple alphas and I killed them for some easy ruins, but still it was a pretty boring day. Nothing special, just the usual farming and grinding. Day 46 came and it was a really stressful day. Since I wanted to go get some magma sword eggs and level up my Andrew at the same time, I decided to go to the volcano island to go to the magma sword cave. And on the process, once I teleported, I teleported next to an alpha basilic, which so far was the fourth one that I found in Fyodor, and when I played Aberration, I couldn't find a single one. So the problem here was that I got stuck on the alpha, and I couldn't move, and I had my Andrew out, I had the giga on my inventory, and yeah, yeah, I didn't want to lose the Andrew. So I managed to keep struggling until I jumped away from the Alpha Basilic. I threw my Giga and something hit me. I don't know if it was the Alpha or it was a Scorpion. The point was that once I mounted the Giga to kill everything around the Andrew, I fall unconscious in front of it. And to this point, I thought that I was gonna lose it all because the Alpha Basilic is really strong. But luckily, I had nothing aggro at me. So I managed to wake up mount my Giga and kill everything and get my Andrew and my Giga safe. After that I made my way to the Magma Cave, in which point I mounted my Andrew and I went on a killing spree killing all the Magma that I could. I killed so many and I spent so much time down there that I got to the point that I was about to kill my Andrew. But luckily I managed to get out just in time I threw out my Giga and I finished the job with my Giga, killing Rap Golems, Magma Swords and everything else. After that, I collected the eggs and I headed back home. With that stressful day of losing my Thames multiple times, one of them being by myself because I didn't check my health and I spent too much time on the lava, and the second time being the Alpha Basilic, I decided to leave everything on a crowd pad, go to sleep and call it a day. For the following days of day 47 and 48, I decided to level up my dines, since they are the only thing remaining to be able to do the boss fight. On day 47, I spent the entire day on the volcano island, and on day 48, I spent it in Asgard. At the end of day 48, everything was ready, so it was about time to see if we could do it or die in the process. On day 49, since I already have everything for Gamma Fenrir, I decided to give it a try. If I managed to do it, I was going to be aiming for Beta Fenrir by day 100. So with that in mind, I got all my Dines and my Andrew ready, I bred all my Dines one last time, and I jumped into the boss fight. And basically it went something like this. And just like that, I lost all of my Dynamics because of an error in the game. It didn't want to teleport my Andrew into the boss fight, for which the Andrew was the most important part in my strategy. So, just like that, I spawned back on base, and after grabbing a bat, I went to the obelisk to grab my Shadow Man with all the stuff inside of him, which was the 9x and some other stuff. After that, I was thinking of quitting the 100 days, cause the summer badge was about to end, and I was not going to be able to rebuild an army in time to do all the island bosses and the Fenrir boss. So I crowd out everything and I went to sleep. I needed some time to rethink of a new strategy and just to know what I was going to do next because 
Yep. This was a massive setback. On day 50, I managed to come up with a plan. And the plan was to use Shadow Mates. Even though they take forever to tame, they're actually pretty strong and even have their own saddle, so I didn't have to worry about that. So, I needed to get 19 Shadow Mates, while tamed, raised to be able to do all the bosses. For that reason, I spent from day 50 to day 65 catching fish during the day, hunting for Shadow Mains during the night, and taming them in the morning. Except day 56. That day I was super bored, so I decided to go tame a 290 Ferox I found in an ice cave. But by day 65, I had a couple females and I was popping out babies for stronger Shadow Mains. So we can say everything was going as planned. For day 66, I noticed that I didn't have a lot of ruins, and since I had to do all three mini bosses again, I was gonna need at least 90 ruins. So I decided to take out the shadow mains to level them up by killing alphas and collecting ruins. On day 67, I was still leveling up my shadow mains by killing alphas, but somebody needed help with the artifact devourer since it was an underwater cave full of jellyfish and eels. I decided to go help him out. So I went, grabbed the artifact, and gave it to him. He was really thankful, so I was happy with it. And since I was already close to the underground ocean, I decided to go and farm the little loot box that is located around the alpha area. I got a send the Velosaro blueprint and some other stuff that wasn't that useful, so at least I can use the Velosaro, but I was really hoping for a Yuri, a Giga, or even a Rex, because even though I'm not using Rexes, I can use it on my other tribe. But you know, after that, I just continued farming alpha and leveling up my shadow mates. From day 68 to 70, I decided that I wanted to make ammunition for the Andrew saddle because I was planning of shooting the saddle while all the shadow mains were attacking the bosses. Now, the only problem with this is that I didn't have a way of getting a lot of wood, so on day 68, I decided to tame myself a raw rat. After that, I farmed stone and flint from the space biome with an Anki. And on day 70, I finished up by making a chemistry bench. After that, making bullets was extremely easy. Day 71 was a simple day. I started out by farming everything for making shotgun shells since I was not gonna make any more minigun turret ammo. And after that, I decided to go get the artifact strong and artifact the cunning, just before getting back to base and preparing everything to get all the rest of the artifacts. Day 72 and 73 was spent getting the remaining artifacts, which were Hunter, Clever, Pack, Massive, Immune, Devour, Root, and Skylord. Which by day 73, we had all the artifacts, and now the only thing remaining were the relics. Day 74 and 75 was spent doing all the mini bosses since we needed all three relics. By the end of day 75, we managed to defeat all the mini bosses and I still had a little bit more time to be able to do a metal run. After that, I fixed my entire armor and I was ready to defeat some bosses. So, Brute Mother, Monkey and Dragon were next. For day 76, I decided to take my Megatheriums and a couple Shadow Mains to test them out against the Brute Mother and they did pretty well. The Shadow Mains took even less damage than the Megatheriums. So, after we did the boss fight, I decided to teleport to the main island and basically spend the rest of the day healing them, because even though they didn't took a lot of damage, since the snow owl was a little bit shitty, it took forever. On day 77, we managed to do the monkey with the same squad as the brute mother. So, I was really motivated to do the dragon. And I'm telling you ahead of time that I regret that decision so much, just because I used the Dynakis from the eggs before the Fenrir fight, you know, all the dines that died, I bred them one last time. So I got enough dines to be able to do the dragon. And once I was about to finish the dragon, the dragon decided to despawn and teleport us back to the terminal. Now, I didn't lose a dine because of that. I didn't lose my stuff, but I did lose all the artifacts and the relic. The dragon was already about to die. It had less than 10% health. So... If it happens, it should be like, like an automatic win, like it doesn't matter, like it's gone. But you know, arc is arc, so I need to farm all the artifacts and the relic all over again. On day 78, I decided to grab my Velo and go do the Twin Wolf, 
once again because since I lost my relic on the dragon fight, I needed another one. So I managed to defeat them without any problem. And once I look at the rewards, I got an ascendant Giga Saro. With this, I thought that the Giga that they gave me was gonna be able to do the mini bosses. And man, I was wrong. Even with the Giga Saro, the Giga was too weak. And I didn't know this until I went to the Ice Bio and summoned the Stone Bear. I was really motivated thinking I was gonna be able to do it. And eventually I noticed that my Giga was too low on health and the bear still had the majority of his health. So I had to cry about it, run away, grab my Velo, position myself to try to kill the bear with my Velo once again. It took me the rest of day 78 fighting with it, and then finally at day 79, I managed to kill it and collect my reward. After that, I decided to go to base and do a little bit of narco berry farming and other stuff just to burn a little bit of time because I didn't want to do anything else. I was a little tired and already bored of fighting bosses, so yeah, I just mess around for the rest of the day. On day 80, the evolution weekend started, so everything was going to be two times. So I took this opportunity and I went to look for some fish to be able to tame some more shadowmans. But sadly, I didn't have any luck. On day 81, I was still looking for a shadowman to be able to tame it. When I saw on the global chat that somebody was selling shadowmans already raised, so to be honest, I prefer to pay for them than to tame them because they're a big pain in the butt. And since they were already raised by the imprint bonus, they were gonna have better stats than mine. So I mentioned the guy, he told me what did I offer. I offered some element and we got to the agreement of 60 element per shadow main. I was the one that put the price, he was okay with it. So now I made my way to his base and since he was doing trade with somebody else, I had to wait a little bit. And basically I spent most of the day waiting for him. On day 82, I finally managed to make the trade with the guy and I managed to get four shadow mains. So I made my way back home, I bred all the shadow mains and after that I decided to go do Bela because I needed to get some blueprint, especially flag blueprints because I needed good armor for the dragon. On days 83 and 84, I decided to level up my shadow mains by killing alphas and farming ruins. Now something really strange happened when I was trying to kill this alpha squid and I don't know how to explain it, so let me show you. Yep, I definitely don't know what happened, but at the end of the day, I managed to get out and all my stuff was safe. I killed the squid and later on I found a 150 squid, which I didn't want to kill because it was too high of a level. So I decided to go do Bela instead. After that, I decided to farm some loot crates from the Skylord artifact and then the strong artifact, but still I didn't get anything important. By day 84, I had all the gear that I needed to do the dragon, so... That was the thing that we were going to do next. On day 85, everything was going great. I collected the remaining artifacts to do the dragon fight. And instead of taking the Yuri, I decided to take the shadow main because it was going to be able to kill the Dimorphodons way quicker. And that was my big mistake and probably my more fatal mistake. The dragon didn't aggro at the shadow main like it did to the Yuri. So the dragon was killing my Dynamicus. I had to even jump out of the shadow main so the dragon aggro at me instead of the dying. And eventually, all of them die, my shadow main die, die, and I lost everything once again. To this point, I was about to say fuck it, but I didn't want to give up. I already had 15 days and I had a lot of shadow mains that I could work with, so you know what? I was gonna do one final push, and whatever happened, happens. On day 86, I was trying to get dine eggs from some people on the server, but they were asking for too much polymer for a couple eggs, like 500 per egg, when I know they're extremely easy to find. So I said, you know what, fuck the dines, and I was looking up on YouTube, trying to see if somebody had done all the bosses with Shadow Man to see just how good they are. And somebody did it, but it wasn't unofficial, so I wasn't really convinced that they were going to work. But you know what? I said... Again, fuck it. 
testing must be done and if it, if it works it works if not well <laughs> fuck me i guess for the days of 88 89 and 90 i spent the entire days looking for the artifacts relics and even armor to be able to do the dragon now on day 90 i decided to go in to do the dragon with a different strategy which required multiple people but i thought that i could do it with only me and the strategy consists of having a Teresino with veggie cakes to aggro the dragon and then whistling the dines to the back of the dragon while he's attacking the Teresino. That way the dines don't get hit and they can kill the dragon. Only problem was that my Teresino was extremely weak. So he didn't manage to kill the minions and the minions and the dragon finish off killing the Teresino and afterwards they kill me and the dines. So to this point, the only thing that I had for boss fight was shadow mains and I didn't want to lose a single one. Already had the maximum that I needed and losing one, I was not going to be able to do the Fenrir boss fight. So I was really nervous and being day 90 with only 10 days, it was really hard, really hard. Now, for those that don't know me, I lack patience. Like maybe you already noticed this, but I don't have patience for shit. So now on day 91, I didn't have time to raise my dines. I only had my shadow mains with a Yuri. And I still needed to do the dragon and do the Fenrir. So I went, grabbed all of my shadow mains, a Yuri and a Giga just in case to do Hattie and Skull. My stupid ass forgot that there's two wolves, not just one. So I went, summoned the wolf, whistled all of my shadow mains to the fire wolf. And then I was running for my life on the Yuri because Basically, the other wolf was trying to kill me. Eventually, I managed to get them both and kill them, so I had all the relics. After that, I just farmed the artifacts to be able to summon the dragon, and I grabbed all of my shadow mains and the Yuri to try to do the dragon, which to this point, it was either I do it, or I fail the entire challenge. Eventually, we got into the dragon arena, and we were managing to do the dragon. The health of the dragon was going down, Slowly, but it was going down, and everything looked like I finally had what I needed to do the dragon. Or, at least that's what I thought. On this time, you're gonna see that I'm basically running naked, because I got desperate and I tried to attack the dragon with my shadow main, and I finished killing it. Just because the shadow main were running in place and not attacking the dragon, we didn't have enough time to kill it, even though it was extremely low health. So that meant that I lost all of my shadow mains, I lost my duty, and it was already day 91. So in 9 hours or 9 days, I was not going to be able to remake everything that I needed to be able to do the boss fights. So, sadly, this was the end of it. Or was it? I mean, the game took away a lot of dinos that I wanted to tame just because I disrendered them. The game didn't want to teleport the Andrew for the boss fight, which made me lose the boss fight really bad. And it took away the dragon on multiple occasions, one by despawning it and the other one by glitching the dice and killing them. So if the game doesn't want to follow his rules, I'm not going to follow my rules. So for that, I spent day 92 to 99 on my other tribe, preparing everything to be able to defeat the main Fenrir boss of this map, because eventually, I had to do it, and I didn't want to finish this 100 days without doing it. I needed to do the dragon, and finish it off by getting my hands on a Fenrir. Finally, day 100 was here, and I started out the day by killing the dragon. Now with an imprinted duty and my dines, my original dines, this was a piece of cake. Basically killed them in just a couple minutes. So now the only thing remaining was the Fenrir boss, which I had an army of Rexes ready for him. And just like that, I rearranged everybody on the red obelisk to make sure everybody went inside. And with Rexes rocking 100 armor saddles, 500 melee, and HP from 12k to 40k, I was more than prepared. And I was more than confident that I was going to be able to beat this boss without a single problem. Even if the Yuri didn't go in, even if like 3 Rexes didn't go in, this was more than enough. So, I'm not going to say anything else. And I'm just going to let you enjoy the sweet, sweet revenge that I took on the main boss of Fyodor. Like you, be strong to hold the powers of the sun. To dream, believe in strength, now I'm the only one. Till I broke the rules, my life. 
Can I be your superhero? There you have it guys that was the entire adventure of 100 days for a single Fenrir which later on I'm going to show you a couple things about the Fenrir which I'm pretty sure most of you want to know because the Fenrir may look useless or may be useless at least the Gamma version but it's actually a pretty useful dino now for all of this I'm really thankful if you made it this far so remember leave a like subscribe for more future videos any questions, suggestions, leave them in the comment section below. And let me know which 100 days do you want me to do next. Like, do you want to continue on official? Do you want me to jump into modded? And if you want me to jump into modded, let me know which mod do you want me to do. Other than that, really hope you enjoy it. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.